up in the backstop, backdrop of the Cold War and the fight against apartheid. So we could focus our energies on that as well. The global political economy since 1990 does not give ground for the moral certainty of those past eras. Some of us first find the solution to be in the teaching of subjects like history, philosophy, and current affairs at secondary school level. This is not a bad idea in itself, but we must be clear about the kind of history we are talking about. If it is the history of dates and a series of events, then young people are very unlikely to be interested. However, if it is a history that tells stories that they can relate to, then it will help prepare future leaders. I recall, for instance, that I was never really interested in learning about the First World War, First World War because it seemed remote in terms of time and location. However, once I read, not in secondary school, not at a later stage, Barbara Tuckman's classic book, The Guns of August, I could understand the risks of stumbling into war through bongo diplomacy, which was a very important insight for my diplomatic career. It would also be important to incorporate activities that broaden the mind and inculcate leadership in, in young people through their training. Obvious examples that motivate, encourage teamwork, and engender collaboration in cool sports, drama, excursions, and field trips. Team sports and drama were strong points of GCI, as were club activities like the Liberal Literary and Debating Society and the Science Club. Excursions and field trips are also impactful, and they are a very good way to influence the behavior of young people. I recall in this regard the famous picture of Bill Clinton visiting the White House as a young teenager as part of a schoolboy group and shaking hands with the then President Kennedy. The inspiration that he must have got from that incident can only be imagined and must have been in his mind until he himself became president. Similarly, it would be important to give young people an early exposure to leadership roles. This was done very well in GCI with the school, teachers, uh, school teacher system. This is the origin of the well-known term Maitio. The appointment of house prefects, the appointment of school prefects, heads of house and, head, and the head of school from among the boys. And they ran virtually everything. Before concluding, let me add that an education that inculcates values in our young citizens is the sine qua non for building a better society. Respect for the rights of others and complying with established rules is the foundation for an orderly society without which development would be difficult, if not impossible. As a result of the values imbibed in GCI, I find it difficult to cross lawns till today. This is no doubt due to the fines and punishments of breaking house rules. But, can, but there can be no doubt that you also learned to respect grass at the Grass Cutting Institute. A revived GCI can and ought to serve as a model for educating our young for leadership. As our school song says, by our example and not by precept, show honest labor's dignity. Indeed, our country cannot be transformed without astute dynamic leadership. And the educational system has a key role to play in cultivating and developing future leaders. I urge us all to rise to this challenge for the sake of our dear country. In ending, I wish to repeat my appreciation to GCI OBA for honoring me with the opportunity to share my thoughts on a topic that has exercised my mind since I joined the foreign public service, foreign service 44 years ago. I extend my best wishes for the success of the rest of the 2023 annual reunion and the 94th anniversary taking place over the next few days. I thank you all for attending and for your patience and kind attention. Applause to our guest speaker, please. Sir, don't go yet. You're going to attend to questions. Just five questions. Please, can the usher bring us? Do you need a seat, sir? No, 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 I'm fine. Okay, okay. I just okay. don't like those. Uh... National President, GCI will be a very distinguished ladies and gentlemen.
I think we can do better by giving the guest lecturer more resounding applause. Thank you very much. Very quickly, we move into the next segment, and that's going to be the question and answer segment. And we are just going to be entertaining five questions. I want to humbly implore you to please signify by raising up your hand. The microphone will be brought to your seat. You introduce yourself, your question, and everything will be answered together, collectively. So I have one, two, three, four, the fifth. I'll be coming to you. I've identified one. Yeah, that student. I only take one from your school. So you rose, you raise your hand first, Doctor Oyamaki. Two, three. Okay, and I won't take the last person. Wherever you're seated, from Seat of Wisdom Catholic College. Okay. Good afternoon, participants, old boys of Government College, and all the well wishers. My name is Sheye Adini, uh, Government College, uh, 1982 set. Dr. Yemi Dikpe Olu, I want to move closer to you. I'm moving closer to you because I'm one of the aggrieved Nigerians. I'm moving closer to you because I'm not happy that despite the grace, destiny, potential has given to me by God, this country has not allowed it to come to fulfillment. I'm not happy with this country, and most especially with Dr. Dipe Olu, going by your record, I want you to prove me wrong, whether you are an accomplished economist, in which I believe you are, you are a seasoned public official, a diplomat, a development expert, a public administrator by excellence, and to can it up, a repeated regular advisor to three past presidents, President OBJ, Obasanjo, President Goodluck Joe Nakutan, and President Mahmoud Buhari, retired Major General. My question is this, sir. Going through your record and profile, you have provided advice, let me say in advisory road, in practical aspects, you have moved closer to those who are in seats of power. Despite all these, your profiles are, which are emulate seriously and envy, a bag of rice in Nigeria is still up, is over 55,000 naira. A Congo of beans is now 1,003. Just one piece of alarm of fish is over 1,500 naira. Sir, do I, can, should I say that you have not been advising them rightly, or they have not been taken to your advice, or what is the actual problem of Nigeria that all your economic and <laughs> let me just find out. Why Nigeria is still in this kind of position, despite your potential and your advisory capacity? Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, I want us to keep it very brief. No, no, no. Good afternoon, everyone. I am all protocols duly observed. My name is David Imeji. Um, doctor, my name is David Imeji. Now, doctor, my question is, in a clearly marginalized economy like Nigeria, where if you don't go to public schools nowadays, if you um, go in private schools, it feels like you're not even going to school. My question is, and for youths that are trying to break into that um, um, status where you meet with those that have, politically and otherwise, what are the strategies you can share
Good afternoon. My name is Umakwe Vivian, a proud student of City of Zoom Catholic College, Alabaka Akure. All protocols duly observed. My question is, are there specific leadership development program or courses that you believe are effective for young adults? And the second is, can leadership skills be learned or are they something people are born in? Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm oh, sorry. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bodude Precious from Aquinas College. My name is Bodude Precious from Aquinas College. Now, our dear doctor was lecturing us on educating for leadership. Now, let's take for instance, I'm the president of Press and Literary Debating Society in my school. I can't hear you. Okay. Come here and shout to me like the other man. All right, sir. So I said, you educated us on educating for leadership. Now, I said, let's take for instance, I'm the president of Press Literary and Debating Society in my school. I have the senior prefect as my vice president. Why I have the president of Student Representative Council as my general secretary in press. Now, my question goes thus. How do you expect to lead leaders? Because virtually, they are leaders in their own field. So that's my question. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I guess I have the last question. Sorry? I'm here, sir. Okay, I thought we said in groups of four. Five is good. Let's go. Yes. Okay. Uh, first, I want to thank you for that brilliant presentation, sir. Uh, I'm proud of you as a GCIOBA, sir. That was brilliantly presented. To my question, uh, I want to, what do you consider the missing link? between ideals, ideals transferred and our curricula as a place of education. Okay, you are not hearing me. It's too much of an echo. There should be some. I should shout. Come and shout. <laughs> All right, sir. I'm sure, you, uh, I'm sure this is better, sir. I hope this is better, sir. Oh. Okay. My name is Febi Oyamaki in Car House 8510, 1991 January 6th. 8510, I mentioned this, sir. <laughs> My question is between what do you consider the missing link between ideal transfer and curricula? Because, like you rightly said, that up to Day, you find it difficult to cross the lawn. That is not in any curricula as at that time, in any curriculum in GCI. But it was part of the ideal transfer to us as a student in GCI. Secondly, leadership as it were in GCI was because the school system had some kind of embedded leadership traits in our seniors. SS, S, from SS3, my set, it was at my set that SS3 was introduced into GCI. So as a GS1, as a GSS1 student, you have five seniors in front of you that you have to learn from. Now in, in, this, uh, in the school system in your state, we now have a division of secondary school and uh, junior secondary school. So an average student coming into school has only two seniors. How can leadership or can they be mentored in this leadership uh, strategies that you have mentioned, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thank the gentleman, the first gentleman, for expressing the frustrations of all Nigerians. I want to, he said he was a GCI old boy. One of the values of GCI 
is you must treat your guest with respect. I just want to put that on the table, then I will answer you. First and foremost, first and foremost, I was a junior officer when I served under the advisor to Shonekon in 19, when was it, 1993? I was a junior officer. When I started in Obasanjo State House, my friend made me an advisor. I was a special assistant to the chief of staff. I was a note taker, right? But that's not the point. The point is I didn't get to those places by seeking political office. I got there by working hard and excelling. I got there by being disciplined. So when they were looking for people, I was sent there from the ministry. It was not a lobby position. That's that one. Put, put that aside. Let's come to the current. I'm surprised that you don't understand the political economy of your country. You should understand the political economy of your country. You should. You should. The challenges that face us, I spoke about here. If you don't have a vision for stru structural transformation, anybody working hard is just a cog in the wheel. You are not the wheel. So, putting your frustrations on me amuses me because I'm just as frustrated as you. When I left school, got, uh, Ife, in my class, all my classmates except myself and my senior brother went to the private sector. After 12, 13 years, when I was still struggling on level 12, level 13, some of them were already SA and some of them were already bank MDs. I went for sacrifice. I went to work for Nigeria. My life has been about development. My life has been about development. So I don't take it personally. I understand your frustrations. But me, I do my best. Wherever I meet myself, I do my best. My ability to con change the entire system is limited. It's limited. But you are free to express your frustrations. I'm frustrated as well. I want a better Nigeria. You know, so please don't take it out on me, eh? Uh, now, now, um, as I said, um, um, how strategies for breaking to the top. I've spoken about them. I've spoken about them. For me, other people have other methods. Some use lobby system. Some use the Dobale system. I use hard work, I use integrity, I use discipline, and I try my best at all times to look at my goal. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to contribute my little bit to the best of Nigeria. So you find it's not only in Nigeria, with all due respect, that I did well. I did well at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. I went there as the coordinator of the African Trade Policy Center. Within a year, the executive secretary had moved me to his office. Within a year of that, he made me his chief of staff. What am I saying? I'm saying that it came from qualities I tried to imbibe. It did not come from begging anybody. So I'm talking to the young man, what strategies? It's not politics. It's people are looking for a few good men and your name comes up and they pick you. You want me to talk about my experience at Oxford and Cambridge? I will. There's no strategy there except hard work and excelling. None. Our president is PhD can tap. He can tell you whether he went there because his father was a justice of the Supreme Court. It's hard work. It's discipline. It's commitment. It's reading. No book I quoted here today I haven't read. So there's no strategy. There's a double strategy. I don't know. I can't help you there. And there's the man, no man strategy. But there's the strategy of when they're looking for a few good men, you should be ready to stand up and be counted. Specific uh, leadership, schools, I don't really have any off head. I'm an old man, so I don't know. But there are lots of um, uh, programs that offer training in leadership. And maybe you are quite right. Maybe us, the older generation, should be integrating leadership studies into the curriculum in schools, not for exams, but through clubs and societies, maybe that way. But you can also develop leadership by participating in activities around you. With all due respect, I don't remember, sir, were you captain of cricket? Yeah. Leadership skills. 
You're already leading a team of people, even at that age. Leadership skills, the man in the club. You're asking me how you will lead the people in front of you. You lead with purpose. You don't lead as to whether the people behind you. You lead with purpose. What is the vision? I mentioned that. You have a vision. You have values. You take positions driven by your vision and your values, and you build a team around you. If someone made you president of that society, it means they preferred you to the senior people there. And the senior people there know that they are members of that club, and you are the president. They will comply. And so far as you are fair, you are transparent, and you act with integrity at all times. Um, then how do you transfer ideals? It's a very good question, but that's what I was talking about. If you instill it in me, as I, as I said, I couldn't cross, I don't cross grass. Again, forgive me for drawing that example. I'm, I'm just trying to use it. If you go to Cambridge, their halls, their colleges are arranged with those same ways in our era. You have those lawns, then you have pathways that divide those lawns. They don't cross there. So it was not difficult for me to see a, a lawn and say I'm going there and I want to cross the lawn. I go around. So I'm saying over time, be it through fear of punishment, be it through just conforming with everybody else, you begin to imbibe those values that you can take with you going forward. So I, I really think that maybe a closer reading of what I was trying to say, work in leadership positions at the junior level, build trust among your colleagues, act with integrity at all times, and um, above all, try to contribute your best to society. You know, uh, I, as I said, I go back to my friend. It's sacrifice, so, so it's not, it's the desire to contribute. It's not anything else. You know, that's all, all I can say. Thank you very much. Please, a big round of applause to the guest speaker, Dr. Adeyemi Dipolu, for doing a wonderful job, dotting the I's and crossing the T's of uh, this uh, topic. I'll be re-inviting to the microphone, but before I do that, I'd like to recognize, let's clap for Dr. Shikol, please, as he takes his seat. Thank you very much, doctor. Students, I think you can clap for what you've been able to learn today. Stand up and clap for Dr. Adeyemi Dupeolu, please. Thank you very much. Can we take our seat? I'll be re-inviting to uh, the microphone up here, the president, but before I do that, uh, I'd like to recognize the presence of uh, the Commissioner of Police here in Ondo State, C.P. Abiodun Ashabi, ably represented by ACP Nzota Chidi. You're most welcome, sir. Please, a big round of applause to the Commissioner of Police. And also, I'd like to recognize gentlemen of the press. I can see the chairman of NUJ in Ondo State, Prince Leke Adegwite. You're most welcome. Thank you for a wonderful job. Well done. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's been an interesting and quite engaging session. And once again, I would like to appreciate our guest lecturer. On this note, I would like to respectfully bring up once again to the lectern, National President GCLBA for his closing remarks. And immediately after, we'll be having remarks from our special guest of honor, representative of Mr. Governor. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot sufficiently express the gratitude of the association to Dr. Yemi Dipeolu for delivering a thought-provoking speech that if you listened attentively, you will have seen that this is a product of great experience founded on intellect. Um, 
where we are today as a country, we are all guilty as charged. Why do I say this? Before 1979, there were schools in every region that were considered exceptional and they were nurtured as such. They were expected to be the training ground for leaders tomorrow. But we clamored for free education. So government college that used to admit about 90 to 99 students a year from the whole of Nigeria, one year admitted 2,000 students without any enhancement of facility because the masses want free education. I am not opposed to free education, but any education that does not deliver quality education is a waste of everybody's time. Because today, you will discover that in Nigeria, today, there is no ready source of outstanding manpower. There is none. We have killed all the secondary schools. We have turned universities to nothing. And we have brought in discipline into our lives. And we are now complaining that we are suffering. It's misplaced. Any country where public officers are the most successful people in the society financially is in trouble. It does not require any rocket science. I will share this example with you for you to think of how great this country was before. I don't know whether it was 1972 or 1973 in government college. Some students bolted, that means went out of school without permission to see Woodstock. They were caught by the principal. They were suspended. The number one on the list was the son of the Minister of Education. So everybody is laughing. Who can suspend the son of a Minister of Education in any school today? And his father sadly took him away, whacking him and saying, you have disgraced me, you have disgraced me. He didn't appeal to the principal. You, as elite, you owe it to your society to find a way of bringing the best brains to governance. Because whatever they do percolates down. If you put an area boy in charge of finance and you say there is no financial policy, if you put your brother in charge of works and you say the roads are not working, all societies that have developed created a marriage-driven system. I delivered a lecture some 10 years ago in honor of Ken Deshofola, one of Nigeria's greatest lawyers, and I had to go and do research on the job. Do you know what I discovered? There are over 1,000 universities, no, maybe over 300 universities in England. All the judges of the Supreme Court of England, apart from one, came from Oxford or Cambridge. There are so many other universities because there is a process 
where the best students are chosen to end up in Oxford or Cambridge and then go into public service or go into governance. I went to America too. The nine Supreme Court justices in America then were from Harvard, Yale, and I think one came from, the current CGN came from Georgetown. America has a thousand universities. No president has had the guts to bring his friend that is below average and nominated as a president. He cannot. He cannot be his best friend and nominate him. The court of the society will condemn it by saying it is not fit for purpose. So, gentlemen, if you are going to turn around Nigeria, there is a lot of work to be done by all of us. This is a country where very few people have any skills. Very. Very. Set up a company today, put 500 million in the company, take it from me. You will lose 40% to inefficiency and 30% to pilferage. Out of the society, survive that way. I think I really want to thank Dr. Dikweolu because of his great service to public service. He didn't end up as to take a chair in one of the universities to be called a professor. Uh, but I think he's adjunct in many places. This is one country that I know where there are more honorary doctorates than doctorates. There are more professors who must not profess beyond the airport. Their professorship ends in Nigeria. They must not profess beyond the airport. When they say you are a professor, you exhibit knowledge. I've been watching television, and you hear a professor come just series of grammatical errors, yet he has students in teaching. Those students believe they are acquiring knowledge. Please follow his precepts and let us rebuild Nigeria. But if you think it's going to be easy, I assure you it's a tough deal. Tough deal. I don't know any state in Nigeria that can effortlessly, effortlessly find it a thousand people who are very well trained in their chosen career because you don't have to be. If I become the friend of somebody in power, I can be anything. And you all follow me without, without protest. So can I invite our distinguished um, guest speaker for the presentation? And I think that um, in this gathering today, the most senior old boy is Kolade Mosuro, if I'm not wrong. He will make the presentation to Dikwe Olu. Huh? Who? Who is that? Who is older? Ah, which year? Huh? I'm is 63 too. Which of you? Was there any prefect amongst you in 1963? Eh? Please come and present to him. Thank you.
Government College, Government College Ibada, Old Boys Association. Twenty-three, twenty twenty-three annual lecture, annual public lecture delivered by Adi Yemi Ipe Olu twenty nineteen seventy six. As the guest speaker for this lecture, I present to you on behalf of the Old Boys Government College Chairman by uh, Distinguished uh, Chairman Wadi Babalaki, 1977. Thank you for this awesome thing. Was the presentation of award to the guest speaker for a job well done. Thank you very much. Please, can we give a big round of applause to the president and uh, the oldest student of uh, GCI? Let's keep clapping until the president takes his seat. Thank you very much, Papa. All right, I'd like to recognize a one-time member of the Ninth Assembly of the Undo State Assembly, Honorable Benga Omole, and the Chairman House Committee on Information. Thank you very much for joining us. Please, can we appreciate him? Thank you for coming. I'm inviting His Excellency, They'll be represented by the special advisor to Mr. Governor on Education, Dr. Mrs. Mumi Ilawole. Please a big round of applause to the representative of His Excellency for his remark. Um, good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Mumi Ilawole a special advisor to the Governor of Ondo State on Education. And it is my honor and privilege to represent Mr. Governor here this afternoon on this occasion. Um, I'm not someone for protocol, so I would like to stand on your already established protocol. But this is without saying a record, big recognition to the national chairman of GCI OBA and also the guest lecturer for today, Dr. Yemi Dipeolu, your greatly recognized, and all distinguished um, guests that are here. KBAC, I recognize you. Thank you. Um, I must commend the speaker, uh, and, and he has done great justice to the topic. But I just want to just say one thing, which is it should be educa educating for service. Because everything I've listened to that the lecturer has told us today is that leadership is service to the people. And that's all. That's just the one line item that he has said. And I wish the students will be able to pick that up. Whatever position that we are, be president, governor, senator, house of reps, assembly member, my honorable is there, we are here to serve the people, and that is where the leadership, um, therein lies the leadership. I bring warm greetings from the governor of Ondo State, Arakunri Oluwaro Timiodun Ayuakere Dolu, S-A-N-C-O-N, the governor of Ondo State. He would have loved to be here personally to attend this august occasion, but as we are all aware, um, he's just coming into the country recently, and he's still having some deserved rest. 
I bring warm greetings from him, and I am going to read a special remark and goodwill message to this August occasion. It is a great honor bestowed on me as a special guest to deliver at this public lecture before this gathering of these great people of Government College Ibadan, Old Boys Association, Ondo State Chapter. It is a privilege to be part of this celebration in the annals of this association, and at the same time, I am highly humbled being in the presence of this prestigious group of individuals. Even standing here as the governor of our dear state, I return all glory to Almighty God for the opportunity to be alive and to witness this remarkable event. It is an honor to be among these outstanding individuals. You have your national president. We know he's held several positions in the country. Um, who have contributed immensely, and even the guest lecturer, to the growth and development of their esteemed alma mater. I wish at this point to express my gratitude to the Ondo State Chapter of the Old Boys Association of Government College, Ibadan. And I think we have one of our own as one of your members. No, two. I can see Link Onjo there. And also our Commissioner for Finance is also a distinguished member of this association. Today's gathering is a testament of the unwavering dedication and commitment displayed by the members of this association to the development of their great college, evident in the relentless pursuit of knowledge and values that has been instilled in you in time past, which has culminated in the achievement of remarkable feats in your individual roles as visionaries, leaders, and catalyst for positive changes which have significantly impacted the society, and this is highly commendable. Government College Ibadan, All Boys Association, is embedded in a rich history. Suffice to say here, this great association of alumnus of Government College Ibadan embodies the essence of tradition, camaraderie, and the spirit of collective progress. This symbolizes the unbreakable bond that transcends time and connects generations. Your commitment to maintaining and nurturing this bond is not only admirable, but also essential for the growth and prosperity of the college. The gathering of today should be a reminder to every one of you the invaluable role that education plays in developing the mind of individuals and society at large. This great institution has in no doubt, nor in a small measure, be instrumental to providing quality education and grooming leaders who have excelled in their various fields of endeavors in their respective communities and beyond. The efforts of the government, administration, and staff of the Noble College must be commended for their unrelenting dedication to imparting knowledge and guiding the students towards achieving academic excellence. In this era of constant change and evolving challenges, it is crucial that we adapt and equip our young minds with the necessary tools and skills for the future. Education must be inclusive, dynamic, and responsive to both individual needs and the involving demands of a rapidly transforming world. As we celebrate the success of the past, we must also strive to embrace innovation, technology, and global perspectives to prepare the younger minds for the challenges that they will ultimately encounter. However, the responsibility of nurturing the future generations does not fall solely on the educational institutions alone. It is the collective responsibility of the parents, community, and the society at large. As alumni, you have a vital role to play in guiding and mentoring the upcoming generation, imparting in them the wealth of experiences you have gathered to guide them in their undertakings by actively engaging them in initiatives that support education, just like the one we are witnessing today which is pivotal to the growth and development of our society. 
In conclusion, it is momentous occasion for me to address this August gathering today, the Old Boys Association of Government College Ibadan, and to also celebrate its commitment to excellence and community engagement, which exemplifies the true values of the college. I enjoy us to continue to celebrate the achievements of the past, empower the present, and inspire the future. Long live Government College, Ibadan. Thank you all. Thank you, Representative of Mr. Governor, Special Advisor on Education, for that kind address. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are gradually coming to a close of the first segment of today's event. Firstly, I would like to note that this event is hosted by GCLBA Ondo Branch under the chairmanship of Wali Akiterewa, 74 set. And on his behalf, I would like to render his apology for his absence. As we know, he's the State Commissioner for Finance, and they are having the FAC meeting. That's the Federal Allocation Committee meeting today. But he is much visible and present here because he has done a lot to ensure that we host a very colorful 2023 annual reunion public lecture. On his behalf, I would like to quickly move to give the vote of thanks. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to firstly thank our indefatigable national president, a man that has provided genuine and inspiring leadership, and a man who has actually raised the bar in terms of how an alumni body should be run, the person of Wali Babalaki in 1971 set. Like I would say, my grand tier in whom I'm well placed. I would like to thank a very distinguished Nigerian, besides being a product of the only school in Nigeria, Government College Ibadan. He's the man who stood before us here today to deliver that very beautiful lecture titled Educating for Leadership the perspective of a GCI old boy. Yemi Dikbe of the 1970 set. What do I have to say? It can only be from a GCI old boy. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. Like the national president noted, even at the slightest and shortest notice, you chose and you were determined to be here with us. We deeply appreciate this gesture, my dear. I would like to thank the government of Ondo State. We invited our governor as a special guest of honor, and our governor has done honor to Government College Ibadan by providing valuable representative for him. I want to thank the special advisor to Mr. Governor on education. You have spoken well, madam, and um, I was about to say you should carry on. Perhaps you prepared to deliver on that lecture. Thank you very much for coming. I want to thank members of the GCLBN National Executive Committee present here, and also members of the Board of Trustees of this great school. It is instructive to note that Government College Ibadan presently is being run by the alumni body, Government College Ibadan Old Boys Association. I think this deserves a round of applause. As simple, as basic as it sounds, we have been able to demonstrate capacity. We have been able to demonstrate sincerity in our quest to restore our alma mater to its old glorious days. And this, the government of your state found in us and found us deserving to take our school in our own very hands. And we are indeed doing the school great justice by raising standards of the school to what it used to be. I would like to thank also members of GCLBA Ibadan branch who are here in their good numbers. The branch is led by Wole Agbaje 77 sets. 
we are very glad to have you in our midst. Before I move forward, it's so obvious that our national president is not in a hurry to leave because I can see that he's enjoying the warmth, the ambience, and the very good, serene nature of Ondo State. Um, sir, you may want to join the Ondo branch because I'm sure you are very pleased with our branch. I would like to appreciate the security agencies present here today. Starting from the Commander 32 Artillery Brigade of the Nigerian Army, who is represented here. I was at the artillery and he promised that he will be with us either fiscally or by representation. Please extend the assurances of our warm greetings to the brigade commander. In a very similar way, I would like to specially once again recognize and appreciate the presence of the Commissioner of Police on those states command, who is also represented here. Yesterday I spoke with the first PRO. She gave me her words that we will have representation from the Nigerian Police Force. Thank you very much for identifying with us. I also like to also acknowledge and appreciate the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. The Commandant has sent his representative here. You came here before the lecture and you've been here all through the lecture. Thank you very much for gracing this occasion with your esteemed presence. Also, the Department of Security Services, the State Director, a very humble man, he told me that he would like to come personally, but at the last minute, he had a very, very urgent state assignment and he decided to send a representative. Sir, we're glad to have you in our midst today and I'm sure you are not living the way you come. I'm sure you've learned a few things and you're taking a few things away about Government College Ibadan. And please be kind enough to relate it to the state director. I want to thank our royal fathers present here today, two of them. And interestingly, one is a very distinguished old boy of Government College Ibadan of the 1971 set. Kabiesis, Eshisa. Thank you for your precious time. In a similar way, I would like to specially recognize members of the Nigerian Union of Journalists on those state chapter, led here today by the president, Mr. Leke Adegbite. Thank you, sir, for always identifying with progress. I want to also thank the schools that have sent student representatives here. When we wrote to these schools, because personally I met with their principals and I told them that it is very imperative to bring students to attend lectures of this nature. Because even the guest lecturer himself was once a lecturer. We need to begin to inspire, we need to begin to motivate, we need to begin to do everything to boost capacity development in our students so that we can have a very decent society. I would like to thank Seat of Wisdom Catholic College, the principal and management of the school. I would also like to thank Aquinas College, Akure. Aquinas College students, wherever you are, stand up for recognition. Put your hands together for yourselves. Seat of Wisdom Catholic College, please do the same thing. Just stand up and put your hands together for yourselves. Again, I would like to note to this gathering that we have the principal of Government College, Ibadan, Mr. Oladokun. Sir, please, wherever you are, please respectfully stand for recognition. <laughs> Sir, I'm glad to announce that he was once my teacher in Government College, Ibadan. I'm glad to have you around, sir. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for all you do for the school.
Okay. Um, we also have students from Fuwashaye Girls Secondary School. Sorry about your mission. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to Please stand up wherever you're seated and just put your hands together for yourself. Thank you very much. Members of the NYC, I don't know the batch, but serving core members present wherever you are, I want to thank you for your presence. You're welcome. We're glad to have you in our midst. I can also see, I might not be able to recognize everybody. We all have a lot of dignitaries here, but I want to specially recognize um, a retired permanent secretary in Ondo State. He was permanent secretary of Ondo State Oil Producing Development Commission, Dr. Man Ali. Wherever you are, sir. Thanks for coming, sir. And um, though he has left, I must also recognize and thank the chairman of my political party, the People's Democratic Party, Honorable Fatai Adams. And I will seize this opportunity to announce to this gathering that I'm a governorship aspirant running and seeking the ticket of the PDP in the next election of Ondo State. Thank you very much. Finally, I would like to note to Mr. President, in less than two months, the Undo State branch of GCLBA has been able to put this up. I personally took the proposal to host this event to NEC. And like the President remarked earlier, it was quite challenging to get approval of NEC. I did all within my ambit to convince NEC that we are going to host this and it's going to be glamorous. I don't know the rating of Mr. President, but I want to be rest assured that he is not disappointed. And I, in this way, I want to thank members of GCLB Undo branch. In a very short while, we've been able to bring ourselves together and we've been able to foster unity and cooperation amongst ourselves. And I can tell you that we'll continue to give back to GCI. On this note, I want to say thank you to all invited guests. And I also want to thank Osatu for coming in their good numbers. Thank you very much. That was eloquently delivered by the branch secretary at the Oluwa the 1991 September site. Please, a big round of applause for that uh, beautiful vote of thanks. I'm inviting to the microphone for the closing prayer. Yinka Ugode, the 76, uh, that's 75 set of GCI. Please kindly come forward, sir, for the closing prayer. A big round of applause as it steps forward, please. Please, shall we pray? Please, can we stand up, please? Mighty God, we thank you. We worship and bless your name. Thank you for the success of this program. Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for all our members that you have brought safely to our Kure. Lord, we pray that as they be going back, you grant them joining masses in Jesus' name. All the remaining programs of the week, Lord, we pray you hand over in Jesus' name. And continually, you move this voice session forward in Jesus' name. Daddy, we thank you. Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Please let's be seated. There is a delicious meal lunch at the other hall, but please let's all be seated and we're going to follow the instruction of the ushers. So, the first two rows with dignitaries should please just go in a file to the next hall. I know the royal fathers, royal fathers should sit down, please. So, we we'll take from the president, we we'll take the lead. President, we take the lead. The president, sir. Sir, you're going to take the lead for the launch, sir. While those on the front seat will follow in that order. Thank you very much. DJ Kekan, over to you. The first two rows. The first two rows. Others, please be seated. Be seated. You will be ushered. The first two rows. Please be seated. Everyone will be attended to. God bless you. DJ Keka, do your job.
They are leaders in their own field. 